All right, so we're going to begin by creating a new query. So we're going to start by create, and we're going to use query design. We're going to add the billing table. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to get some statistical information on our invoice amounts. So we're going to add the field invoice amount three times. You don't want to add any other fields, just the invoice amount. And then we're going to begin using the aggregate functions. So in order to do that, we're going to come up to the Query Design tab and choose our Totals button. So once we have our total button, you'll notice we get a new row. And this row says total. And right now, everything says group by. You don't want to try to put calculated fields and functions up here in the field row. You simply want to click in that total row and tell it what functions you want to see. So for example, in the first column, we want to see the minimum, the lowest invoice amount in our database. In the next column, we want to see the average. And then finally, in the last column, we're going to see the maximum. We could end up wanting to see more of these. So for example, this isn't in the book, but I could add invoice amount another time and I could maybe add the sum if I wanted to see the total. So the first thing I'm going to do is click Run. And now you can see that we have an, in, an, excuse me, a query that shows minimum invoice amount, average, maximum, total. We could have added counts. We could have added several things. But notice, if I go back into design view, I don't have any formulas in the top row. It's all handled by selecting in the total row. So if I chose invoice amount again, I could say I want a count. When I click run, now it shows me how many total invoices are in there making up those amounts. So we can add these headings. Notice Access builds in a column heading for us as a default. So now let's take a look at changing those column headings. So let's say in this first column that they told us to use a field name of minimum invoice AMT. So what you're going to do is you're going to click in front of the field name that's there and you're going to type in the new field name they gave you. So we said minimum invoice AMT and then you have to add a colon. I'm going to enlarge that a little so you can see it. We could do the same thing with this next one. Click in front of it and give it a name of Average Invoice AMT colon. You have to keep the field name of Invoice AMT after the colon. We're going to put in field names for all these. Maximum invoice 
AMT colon. Here we would create the same concept by saying total invoice AMT. So if they give it to you as a field name, you must put it in front of invoice AMT on the field row. So this would be invoice count colon. So you notice with each of those, if they give us a new name as a field name, that's where we need to put it. And if we click Run, now you see the field names we put in there as our column headings. And maybe I might decide that I would rather have captions. So for each of these, we're going to click in the field and open up the property sheet. We're going to come down here and put a caption. So it's going to say minimum invoice AMT with spaces. Then I'll click on the next column and add the same caption. Average space invoice space AMT. Click in the next column and put in a caption of maximum invoice AMT. If we had added a sum, we would say total invoice AMT. And then finally, if we added the count, we would say invoice space count. Now, when we click Run, we get, again, the revised captions show up for each of our statistics. We're going to save this query as Invoice AMT Statistics. Now, oftentimes, I would also want the ability to group that. Maybe I would like to see how many of the invoices were for off-site visits versus on-site, and also what the statistical amounts for each of those would be. So we're going to close this query. And we are going to do a right click on Invoice Amount Statistics and copy it. Pick a blank spot and click Paste. And we're going to call this new one Invoice Amount Statistics by Off-Site. Now again, when you copy and paste, always want to make sure you go down to the new one. It says buy off-site and open that one up. This is the one we're going to change. You want to make sure you change the new one and not the original. So we're going to go into design view. Now what I want to add is I want the field that defines whether or not a visit was off-site. As you can see, that field is not in this table. So I need to add another table to my query. So the first thing I'm going to do is click Show Table. That will allow me to add another table. 
I'm going to add the visit table. And you can see that table has off-site. Now my preference is usually to have off-site the, the field that is going to be grouped by as the first field in my query. If they told you to put it to, as the last field, you could simply double click. But if I want it as the first field, I have to click on it and then drag it down to the first field. Whoops, I missed it. And what it will do is it will shift all of our other columns to the right. And when it comes in, you'll notice it defaults to group by. What group by means is it's going to look at each value that it finds in that column or in that field and it's going to calculate all of those statistics that are listed in the other columns for each value so we will get a row of statistical answers for the visits that are off-site and then another row for all the visits that are not off-site. That's what group by means. So we're going to click run. And you can see the majority of our invoices, a little more than half, would be off on-site. So let's go ahead and close this one. We'll save it first. What if I wanted to see the same statistics only by the city where the customer lived in? So again, I'm going to do a right click on our statistics and choose copy. Click in a blank space, in a blank space, and right click. Okay, we can. I'm going to collapse that one. So I get some blank space, and then I can paste. And this time, I am going to say invoice amount statistics by city. Same concept. We're just going to group differently. So I'm going to open up the by city. You want to make sure that's the one you're changing and you go to the view. Again, the city field is not here. So I'm going to need to link to some other tables. So let's see. Add the visit. I add the animal and I add the owner. Then hopefully I can figure out which table has the field I need. See, I need to be able to connect to tables, so I need the ones that link together. So let's see if this works for us. I'm going to add city. It's going to say group by. And now we're going to click run. So now you can see each city and how many invoices we have had in each one and then the statistical amount for each one. So these are three examples of, yes, we're going to save the changes, of the statistic aggregate totals in a query. You should expect to see on your case exam one that is simply your aggregate totals. You may be asked to include a field name, which goes here, in front of the colon, or you could be asked to add a caption over here that has to go in the property sheet. 
In addition to that, you should expect to have to do some form of a grouping. The grouping usually requires adding another table to get access to the field that you're trying to group by. And then adding that field with the total saying group by. And I did two examples for you to see. Here you were grouping by city. So each city has all of your statistical totals. These two queries tend to have a high error rate on the exams. So I strongly encourage you to practice these and review them.